my name's Jenny and I've lived in Totnes for nearly 10 years um, and during that time one of the main projects I've been involved with was school farm community supported agriculture. Um, so back in 2012 myself and a friend uh, decided to turn the tiny little vegetable box scheme that was already running on the site into a community supported agriculture scheme. And the reason behind that was, was there were a number of reasons. Uh, one was that the, the, at the time Dartington Hall Trust, where the land is, uh, had done a consultation in collaboration with Transition Town Totnes looking at the land and how to use the land uh, on the Dartington Hall estate. And one of the big desires was uh, for there to be a community supported agriculture scheme. Um, and so we heard that demand that was coming from the community and we also saw that we needed to do something to make the farm more viable um, financially but also we wanted it to be more community orientated and to involve more people and to be uh, more connected with the local people and local town. Um, and so we investigated a number of different models for community supported agriculture and we decided to go ahead and uh, set up a scheme which is called a, a farmer-led CSA. Uh, CSA is the abbreviation for community supported agriculture. And so we set up a farmer-led one which means that you set it up with the intention of uh, the farmers essentially having a livelihood from the farm so that people can actually generate their income uh, through doing that type of work. So that was one of our main aims, was to create work for, for ourselves and others. We're lit! Another aim of the project was to teach people about growing. Um, so we worked in collaboration with a couple of local colleges uh, and we ran training for adults in growing organic vegetables. Another aim of the project was to care for the land, so we actually had part of the site which was no dig agriculture, so that meant that we weren't turning the soil, uh, we would just put uh, manure on top of the soil each year and let the worms and the life in the soil do the work of turning it, um, so it's a way of caring for the soil. Um, and then also we grew everything organically. Um, and we tried to grow with as minimal impact as we could. Um, and another main reason for the farm was wanting to provide really good quality, healthy food for our local community. So we had sort of four aims, four main aims. Um, and over the course of six years, we grew from being a tiny little scheme from 10 boxes to having 70 veg boxes. Um, um, everyone who had a veg box became a member of the project so they sign up for the year and the idea is that if you sign up as a member you are um, committed for that whole season so that means that you you say that you're you'll receive you commit to receiving the vegetables from the farm for the whole season so you either pay a fee up front or you pay monthly throughout the year but you are committed um, and one of the reasons for this is um, because early on in the season as a grower you need to be able to plan for your season so you need to be able to plan your your vegetables, what you will sow, how much you will sow um, and you also at the beginning of the season is when you're using, uh, you're buying all of your materials, so you're buying your compost, you're buying your seeds, it's when you have the most outgoings um, and so you really need people's commitment then, you need to know that you, that people are going to want the vegetables and you need to know that there is money to pay for all of the materials as well. So it makes it much easier as a grower to plan for the year um, and then uh, we were really lucky the whole time I was at school farm we had amazing 
years so we grew huge amounts of vegetables and we had more than more than we needed and so our members received huge boxes every week um, but the idea with it is that if you had a bad season one year if for some reason the weather was really bad or or um, a disease killed all your carrots or something like that that the members understand that 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 means they'll get less that year um, but overall or as I saw it during the time we were there overall you end up with a lot year by year um, so it's quite quite a good deal as a member um, I'm not part of School Farm anymore um, I finished there in September 2016 uh, and we handed it over to two of our apprentices so we've been training up two apprentices um, for a couple of years and they took on the farm from us and then have continued it since then and since then it's evolved even more and there's new people come in um, and so now that I'm back in Totnes and um, having been away for a short time I'm hoping that this year I can be a member of, of School Farm CSA so and, and actually be the other side receiving the vegetables not growing them so that's my plan. No dig is one of the methods of growing that we used at School Farm and it is what it says and um, it essentially means that you don't you you turn the soil or you move the soil around or you dig the soil as, as minimally as you possibly can so normally um, in a in a growing situation you would have machinery either a tractor or a rotavator and you would turn the soil every year and you would um, turn compost into the soil for example um, you would use it as a way to get rid of weeds and um, you would use it as a way to aerate the soil um, there's lots of reasons for doing that there's also uh, the negative effects of that which is that it can uh, negatively affect the structure of the soil and also the life within the soil um, so if you can imagine that the soil is made up of lots of different organisms that live at, at different different parts in the soil so some live at the top some live further down and then you come along and you turn that all over then you've got all these uh, these organisms that like living down here and suddenly they're, they're up here and it's not the right environment for them so it, it doesn't do your soil life any good so what we wanted to do was have a system whereby we were uh, not interfering with the soil so what we did each year was we put a big thick layer of uh, compost or, or manure on the soil so two or three inches and then rather than turn that in we let all the worms and the organisms in the soil they just pull it down and you see over the course of the season it goes from being really uh, dark on top to like a mi all mixed in um, and and as long as you're adding enough organic matter and you're not uh, pushing machinery over the soil or you're not walking on it lots, then you don't get the compaction. So the soil will naturally aerate itself. Um, so we found that that system worked really well. And it was also, if you're growing on a small scale in your house, in, at home or in your allotment, then not having to do that work where you have to dig which for a lot of people is 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 very heavy going. Um, if you can do it in a different way where that isn't necessary, then that can really help to reduce uh, the amount of work that you have to do in the in the garden. So um, it works particularly well on a smaller scale. Really? I'm far from an ex expert on this, but I know there's a lot of statistics out there. Um, that would that, that tend to point towards the fact that organic agriculture um, is very productive per square metre. So you can produce um, a huge amount of food with a very small amount of land uh, when you grow organically. What's likely to increase is your is your labour. So uh, it's more likely that you're going to have 
to employ more people, which actually creates more work for people, which is no bad thing. Um, but I suppose if labour is one of your biggest costs as a business, that 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 may might make it uh, that that's going to make the cost of your business go up. But it is going to provide more people with work. And the other thing that I would say about it is that if we continue with, we know, I mean we know and there's huge amounts of evidence to suggest that intensive um, agrochemical based farming uh, or vegetable production over time really degrades and erodes the soil. And the soil is a limited, in limited supply, we only have a certain amount. So um, one of the most important things that organic agriculture does is it cares for the soil. And so that it think, it's thinking about in the long term, how can we continue to produce food over time? Um, whereas short term, very intensive production that's based on a lot of chemicals, bit by bit, we're going to degrade our soils and and end up in a situation where we don't have any soil left. So you have to think about not only production now, how much can we produce in this moment in time, which is very good in an agriculture system, but how much can we produce over time as well. So you have to think about it in two different time spans. There has been definitely an increase in organic production and an increase in demand for organic foods. Um, they do, organic foods will often tend to be a little bit more expensive because as we've talked about the, the labour involved is more um, and so that pushes the price up a little bit. Um, but, the, but there has been, despite that, and even during the during a, re a recession in the UK, this, the, the demand for organic produce has steadily been increasing. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? I think an interesting an interesting statistic uh, that is often quoted is that the average age of a farmer in the UK is 65. Um, and what I've seen during maybe the last 10 years is there's been a real popularization of growing in urban areas, so growing food in urban spaces, and then also growing food in small scale uh, projects, ecological uh, projects. So for example, through community supported agriculture, which tend to be a sort of slightly smaller scale. Hello!